Hi everyone! Thank you all so much for tuning in to another video. Today I'm going to be answering a very commonly asked question and that is what are some of my favorite or essential art supplies that I use for drawing? Real quick before I begin, I just wanted to announce that I've released a new set of stickers in the spirit of Halloween. And as a special offer for you guys, I'm going to be including a free sticker with any purchase from now until October 31st at my website, happyd-artist.com. No code is necessary. As you guys know, I make mainly drawing and painting time lapses, and I've already made a video of my favorite oil painting supplies. So today I am going to help all of you drawing lovers out there and share with you kind of my most, I think, crucial art supplies that I use for drawing. So these are things that I use pretty much in every single drawing time lapse that you've seen me do. And um, I'm just gonna get started right now. So first things first, is my pencils that I use. I am actually not a super big fan of using regular graphite pencils because I just feel like it's a little bit too reflective. So sometimes when I make time lapses, um, if the camera is pointed the wrong way or if the lighting is off, then the entire piece is just like a giant reflection and you can't see any of the actual drawing. So instead, I like to use colored pencils and um, most particularly, my favorite brand is the, these Prismacolor color erase pen pencils. So you can get these at any art store or even on Amazon and you can get them in a pack. I usually like to get them in packs. So I use basically a black Prismacolor color erase pencil to do all of my basic shading. Basically it's like a replacement for my graphite pencil. And I also take advantage of the colors available to me to add just an extra pop of like saturation or life to the image. And um, these also come with an eraser, so I actually haven't really had to use a separate eraser. And they erase pretty well as long as you use light pressure. So these are my first and foremost, most important drawing supplies. Now to blend with the Prismacolor color erase pencils, I just use this blending stick. I honestly don't really remember where this is from or what the brand is, but pretty much any blending stick you can get from an art store or Amazon or anywhere online will do. Um, these things are really useful for blending, especially in the smaller areas if you're if you're trying to do like a detailed blend, but you don't want to use your fingers or something larger. Um, having a little blending stump can really help get that smooth yet detailed effect. Also, one thing I love is this Micron pen. So Micron, a lot of you might already know this, especially um, you illustrators out there, but Micron is a very, very popular, very awesome ink pen brand. And the one I use is zero, it's size 005, so I think it's actually half a milliliter, so see, it's really fine tip. And um, if you get this in black ink, for me, I found that it really helps make the really dark areas pop. So if I'm doing like eyelashes or nostrils or just a really dark shadow or sometimes to outline my figure if I want their, their silhouette to stand out more, I always use this on top of my color erase pencils. And I usually buy a pack of 10 because these run out pretty quickly. And so yeah, but I really, really love Microns and I've been using them for years. To make the highlight of my drawings, because I tend to use toned paper for my drawings, I like to use this white charcoal pencil. The brand is Generals, and as you can see, I've pretty much almost finished this one. But this charcoal pencil, I've been, again, using this for years, and the trick with this one is to use very gentle pressure. So a lot of people ask me, Oh, I try to put the whites on my drawings, but you know, it just doesn't seem like it's opaque enough or doesn't show up enough. So my trick, instead of using hard pressure to try to deposit as much of this as I can, um, instead what I'll do is use light pressure and do it layer by layer. And I find that that technique over the years is something I've learned. It works way better for making the white stand out more and become more opaque than if you just were to use really hard pressure. I think building layers allows it to have a more soft and natural effect because you have like a gradient that builds up to the widest point. Whereas if you use really hard pressure, sometimes it interacts 
in unpredictable ways with the texture of your paper. And so you'll get random splotches where there's no charcoal and random splotches where there's too much charcoal. So better safe than sorry, I suggest using light, gentle layers. Sometimes when I want an extra kind of base or an extra layer of, I guess, value or color, I like to use these alcohol markers. My favorite brand is the Blick Studio brand and I get it from this art store called Blick and I love this because I love the brush tip so if you guys can tell here so the brush tip is soft it, I don't know if you guys can see but yeah it's basically almost like a brush <laughs> it's very appropriately named and this is great I tend to use the um, Blick Studio brush markers for my first layer of hair or any sort of place in my drawing where I want there to be a, a color for me to start off with. So for example, if I want to draw a girl with pink hair, I will just start with a layer of a pink using the brush marker and then I will use like let's say, I don't know, a red and a magenta and maybe a pink color erase pencil on top of it to add the little details and extra shadows, midtones, and highlights. But starting off with a base that already has kind of like an opaque layer of color, I find that gives me A, a more like rich saturated color and B, it gives me more value to start off with so that I don't have to kind of waste time or waste my pencil trying to build up the value. I already have something very fast and effective to start off with. So. I don't use the markers to render details. I rather use them for kind of the first layer. And then I use the color erase colored pencils to build up the details. Paper. So I actually use a variety of papers for my drawings. It really depends on what I have available with me. Um, I like to take these sketchbooks with me, especially when I go travel. But um, my favorite type of paper is toned paper. So you can get toned gray, toned beige, or tan. Um, I particularly like toned paper because, again, it's kind of like, it's a great starting place if you want to build value because it's already kind of has all the mid-tones established and all you have to do is kind of worry about shadows and highlights. And I find that you don't have to spend as much time building up value when you start off with already kind of like a medium light gray paper. So, oh, also um, it's really fun to add in the charcoal highlights. It really makes them pop versus if you draw on white paper, you don't really get to add in highlights. You just kind of have to either erase what you've already drawn or avoid drawing things to, to give that empty space the white highlight. But I find that, you know, with tone paper, you can actually use a white charcoal pencil or sometimes a white gel pen if you want to add that highlight pop, which for me is really satisfying. And last but not least, this is purely optional and I don't use it for every single drawing, but I use it for a lot of my drawings. And this is a gold, basically a gold paint marker. And the brand is Pen Touch. And you can actually get them in quite thin tips. So I think this one is 0.7 millimeters. Um, but yeah, basically it is just perfect for adding the extra kind of wow factor to your paintings and, or sorry, to your drawings. And for me, just having like a metallic gold shimmer to my drawings makes them feel kind of elevated and special in a way. And they're also great if you want to embellish prints and you want to embellish with gold. And this brand, it is a little pricey. Um, you can get them on sale, but this is through through my years of trying it out, this is kind of my favorite brand for, for gold. And I feel like the gold with the pen touch is just so vibrant and really pops. Um, let me see if I can draw some on my hand. Come on, come on camera focus. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see. But yeah, see, even on my hand, you can see how how opaque it is, and it really just goes on very smoothly. So I definitely recommend this if you guys love gold like I do. Um, gold is perfect for embellishments and little highlights and kind of making the subject stand out and feel a bit more regal in a way. So that is pretty much all of the art materials that I use for my drawings. Sometimes I'll add in a little bit of mixed media, maybe like a little bit of acrylic paint or glitter paint. Um, but for the most part, these are my go-to crucial essentials. And when I travel and I need to do drawings while I travel, 
I pack every single thing I just showed you guys. So I hope you guys found this video useful and I hope it can supplement you on your next art store visit or next online shopping visit. And um, as always, thank you guys so much for tuning in, for your support, and I hope to catch you guys in the next video. Bye.